I wanted to ask you something though that I know is is, uh, is has been in the news and will be near and dear to your heart. Something I think you could provide some insight on the uh, Alice Johnson story. This, yeah. Right as I talk about something serious, this hat lops over like ET. Which is great. <laughs> um, the, the commuting of the sentence of of Alice Johnson uh, by President Donald Trump. Now we haven't really heard a lot about this in the media. Black woman who was there for nonviolent drug related charges, and even to deal with this, obviously as governor. Um, T tell us what, what what your view is on this situation right now, and wh why hasn't it gotten more coverage? It would seem as though it's something that is a happy all-around story everyone would want to hear. Well, here, here's the fact. If a conservative like Donald Trump issues a commutation to an African-American woman who clearly had a disproportionate sentence for her crime. Yes, she did. It was a first-time offense, nonviolent, and she gets life without parole. I cannot begin to tell you how excessive a sentence that is. Stephen, most people who are convicted of murder will end up serving seven or eight years. Right. That, that's just a fact. Some will have maybe a life sentence, but get out after a, 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 you know, a number of years. Right. Life without parole is the kind of sentence that you give to somebody if they've murdered a cop, if they have raped and dismembered a child. It is not what you give to a great grandmother. By the way, she's already served 22 years of the sentence. She has lost that much. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know what? We've got to be tough on crime. I get that. Sure. But we should not be so tough on people. And, and I'll put it to you this way. My prison director when I was governor, great guy named Larry Norris. And he used to say, we're locking up a lot of people that we're mad at rather than the ones we are afraid of. Right. And I think that really settles it because, look, it costs uh, probably in the neighborhood of $35,000 a year in a federal lockup for the taxpayers. Now, I'd have to ask, as, as a taxpayer, how many of us are really excited about locking up great-grandmothers for a crime committed 23 years ago, adjudicated 22 years ago, and are still being in prison for no particular valid reason after all this time uh i don't know i'd imagine maybe like bill cosby to draw some press off himself i'm trying to think <laughs> of your home and giving her universal income would actually be cheaper yeah, it would actually be cheaper well you know here's the thing too, i also don't want to conflate the issues because the left they've been so wrong about some of these these sentences or yeah. wanting full pardons remember tukey williams and uh, they were complaining to arnold schwarzenegger going this guy well this guy was actually one of the founding members of either the bloods or the crips had killed i think four people in three different shootings and refused to his entire life give up information regarding other members of the gang but he wrote a children's book so everyone was campaigning saying well you you, you need to make the phone call this guy. We had, I think he had the death penalty, if I'm not mistaken. So. And this was very different. I'm going, well, hold on a second. It's one thing to write a children's book on how to avoid gang violence. It's another thing to actually save children's lives if you could give up the names of people who are out there still killing. This wasn't one of those cases. I encourage people to go read up more on, um, on uh, the, the Johnson case.